Hi everyone. Today we're going to uh, look at understanding the PLC program scan. And we're going to do this um, by using the Do More Designer software with the Do More Simulator. And we're going to look at three different examples of uh, inputs, outputs, and an actual application to look at how the PLC will actually scan our logic that we create. Now the first thing we should do is we'll look at the actual PLC scan. What is it? It actually will read the inputs. It executes the program and this is the part that we'll be talking about. Then there's a diagnostic and communication part of the scan and it updates your outputs and then reads your inputs again. So that's basically what a PLC scan is. Now if we look at the program I have up here, you'll see that I have X0 controls Y0 and X0 also controls Y1. So my program is now on and running and if I hit X0, both of these outputs now come on, which we would understand. Now the if I were to now uh, install a rung, we'll just turn X0 off, we'll install a rung between these two and we'll just insert rung before cursor and I'm doing this online and we will put this as X1 and the output that we will put is actually going to be X0 and X0 is actually our input but we can also control that input um, as an output so we'll accept that rung we'll save it and we'll write it to the program there we go so now this rung is in and if we turn on X0 now, okay, you will see that only Y0 turns on. And that is because on the next scan, because X1 is not on, Y0 then turns off. So for a typical PLC, it will solve logic left to right, top to bottom, and the status of the memory from the previous rung are available for the next rung to use. So in our case here, we've actually turned, and uh, this rung, the second rung, we turned X0 off, so it's no longer is valid. So before, when we first started, you will saw that X0 was actually um, on, and it was on both these, now it's off. We can see that we changed that status. Okay, and then in order to turn uh, Y1 on, we actually have to turn X1 on, and that's what happens. So if we look at our next example, we have actually, um, there is uh, X2, and let me just pull that up here, X2, and we have, uh, it goes out to Y2, then we have X3, which then moves a uh, bit into Y2, then we have X4, which sets Y2, and X5 that resets. And again, if we look at the typical scan, it solves left to right, top to bottom, and the status is available for the next rung to use. So if I were to, again, run this in a simulator, okay, we turn on X2, you'll see that Y2 valve turns on. And I'll turn off these other two from our previous example there. So there's my correlation. As soon as I turn on X3, because we're moving bit uh, C0, which is off, into Y2, it turns it off. So again, it never actually outputs the, the physical output Y2 is because our logic is turning in on in the first rung, but off in the second rung, and it never gets to that output setting. Then if we do X4, we will set it, which then turns it back on again. So we're actually on, off, on. And then finally, X5, um, we'll reset this, which will turn it off. So what you'll see is that really in your PLC logic, um, it will solve it from, again, left to right, top to bottom, and it's and the status is available for the next rung from the previous rung. And in that particular case, it's really the last rung that controls that output it actually overrides everything else. And as you can see, the you know this last one is reset always will override it. So this is why what we want to do is if we have a condition in our when we're troubleshooting our logic and you see that we have conditions that should make it true but it's not, it could be that we actually are moving words instead of into the output or we have multiple set resets 
That's why a lot of programmers do not like using them because it creates this condition that we're showing here. Our last example, we'll turn this all off now. And our last example will actually be on a uh, start stop on a motor. So what you see here is our start 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 stop motor and X8 actually will turn the motor on. Okay, but it goes through the stop and the stop is usually wired normally closed. So we'll just turn that on and you can see our motor now comes on and it seals it in. It seals it through a jog work bit normally closed. And if I turn off the start, then you'll see that it continues on because we have the sealing latch. In order to stop it, we can then stop with our stop and then it goes back on and we can start it again. Our jog is where the difficulty comes in. So when we go to our jog switch X10, we'll give that on. And what you'll see is when X10 goes on, then C1 comes on, which is our internal jog work bit. That jog work bit then will be up here and it actually disables my ceiling contact. So that means when I turn off X10, okay, my motor still does not continue to operate. So that's important because again, um, when I go through and I turn off my X10, okay, this is already previously not true from the previous scan, so it doesn't allow it to seal in. So again, typical in a PLC, uh, we will scan left to right, top to bottom, and the status of the memory from the previous rung are available for the next rung to use. All right, that's it for today. Um, before you go, um, you can help other people find this information by giving this video a heads up. And to keep you up to date on all the recent videos, please subscribe to this channel. Now all of the links in this video are listed below as well as a link uh, to the uh, information on the website. And the website actually contains a more detailed description of everything we've just talked about. All right, and that's at www.accautomation.ca. And while you're on the website, if you were to subscribe, you'll get free links to two of our ebooks on PLCs. Right, thanks for watching.